And now we are on module five. Module five is different than module four. In module four, we just focused on solving one type of equation, quadratic. In module five, we have four different types of equations to solve. We are going to be using the skills of linears and quadratics to solve these equations, and there's going to be some little extra tricks thrown in. So let's go to our class notes. Okay, let's start off with the first new equation we're going to learn to solve. This is called a polynomial equation. Now you've heard the word polynomial before. Poly is the prefix that means many. So polynomial is many monomials. It's when you have a bunch of terms connected by addition and subtraction. So believe it or not, you have seen polynomial equations before. A linear equation, such as 3x plus 5 equals 0, is really a polynomial equation. It has many terms. It has the 3x, the 5, the 0. We call it linear, though, because it's only degree 1. So it is a polynomial equation, but it has a special name linear because it's degree 1. If you look at my second equation, x squared minus 2x plus 5 equals 0. Again, this equation has many terms. It has an x squared, a 2x, a 5, and a 0. But this equation has a special name we've already saw. It is a quadratic equation because it's degree 2. It has the x squared. But now look at my third and fourth example of equations. I have 12x cubed minus 27x equals 0. Again, there's two terms here, but look at the degree. It is degree 3. So it's not linear. It's not quadratic. So any equation that has a degree 3 or higher is going to be called polynomial. The last example, 3x to the 4th minus 48x squared equals 0. Again, there's only a couple of terms there, but look at the degree. The highest exponent is 4, so this is a degree 4. We can't call it linear. We can't call it quadratic. So because it's degree 4, it's a degree 3 or higher, we call it polynomial. Now, that degree is very important. We saw with linear equations that are degree 1, you have one solution. We saw in module 4, quadratic equations that are degree 2 have two solutions. So now for degree 3, can you guess how many solutions we're going to have? That's correct, we're going to have three solutions. And if you're degree 4, you would have four solutions. Now, how do we arrive at these answers for x? Well, the easiest way to solve a quadratic is to use your skills of factoring. So we look at this like a quadratic. Any polynomial equation, degree 3 or higher, we're going to look like, like quadratic. We're going to set it equal to 0, and we're going to use our factoring skills. So let's go to the board and do some work. All righty. All right, if you all look at my first equation, 12x cubed minus 27x equals 0. So it's a cubic, a polynomial equation. It's degree 3. To solve a polynomial equation, we're going to use our factoring skills. But you've got to remember, before you can factor, your equation's got to equal what, guys? That's right, it's got to equal 0. Well, this one's already set equal to 0, so that's done. So now we've got to use our factoring skills. So we've got to recall our rules. Remember, our three rules of factoring are GCF, difference of perfect squares, and trinomials. Those are our three big rules of factoring we always use in college math. So the first rule to look at is GCF. Do these terms have something in common we could divide out? Sure they do. We could divide 12 and 27 both by 3, and x cubed and x can be divided by x. So we're going to pull out our GCF for 3x, we're going to put parentheses and tell what's left. 12x cubed divided by 3x is 4x squared. Negative 27x divided by 3x. Well, negative 27 divided by 3 is negative 9. And when you divide the x's, they cancel out. Now, here's the difference. We're not done factoring. Remember, factoring is not always a one-step process. If you look in here, we have another rule of factoring. 
We've already pulled out the GCF, so we can't do that again. So what is this? Is this difference of perfect squares or is it a trinomial? Yes, it's a difference of perfect squares. You see the subtraction symbol? We have perfect squares. So this factors into two sets of parentheses. And go with your definition. Perfect square means something times itself. What times itself is 4x squared? 2x times 2x. What times itself is 9? 3 times 3. How do you get a minus? Well, the only way to get a minus is if you have different signs. Now, don't forget, this GCF you pulled out has to stay in front. Because remember, factory means it's all connected by multiplication. Now, remember in Module 4 when we were doing quadratics, when you factor, you always make two equations. Now, because we're doing polynomial equations, when you factor, there may be more than two equations. And if you look, there's one, two, three x's. So there's going to be three equations. And we're going to set them equal to, you're right, zero. So you've done magic, guys. And it's all about the trick. You went from being degree three to being degree one. So you have made now three linear equations. And we use our basic algebra skills and we solve. We get zero as our first solution. These are two-step linears, so we'll subtract three here and we'll divide by two. And remember we talked about this, it is okay to have an answer as an improper fraction, negative three halves. And over here we'll add three and we'll divide by two. And our other solution is positive three halves. So we have three solutions. X is zero, X is negative three halves, X is positive three halves. And they're all correct. Now we can do a check on those. Okay, and remember what checking means. It means when you take that number and substitute it in, the equation's gonna bounce. So for example, if I take zero, zero cubed is zero, and 12 times zero is zero. If we put zero here, negative 27 times zero is zero. Well, 0 minus 0 is 0. And the same thing's true with the fractions. If you substitute them in, they will check. Now, it's important to understand this. The only way these solutions would not check is if you made an error in your calculations. So when you solve a polynomial equation, this is degree 3, which is telling us I should have how many solutions? 3. 1, 2, 3, and they all should work. See how easy that was? All right, let's try our second example. So let's erase this. And our next equation in our notes is 3x to the fourth equals 48x squared. So again, we have an equation. What degree is it, guys? It's degree four. So it's not linear. It's not quadratic. It's called polynomial. We're going to solve it like a quadratic. And in that sense, we're going to set it equal to 0. So who's going to move? The negative 48x squared. So we're going to subtract it. And remember, we've been discussing this now for modules. You move x's left and right by adding or subtracting. That's how you move those terms. You can't subtract a fourth and a squared. They're not alike. So you write them in the correct descending order equals 0. Now you're going to use your factoring skills. So again, what's the first rule of factoring? Very good, it's GCF. What do these have in common we could divide them by? Well, 3 and 48 can both be divided by 3. x to the fourth and x squared can both be divided by x squared. So we're going to pull out a 3x squared, and you're going to tell me what's left. 3x to the fourth divided by 3x squared is x squared. Negative 48x squared divided by 3x squared. Well, negative 48 divided by 3 is negative 16. x squared divided by x squared cancels out. But you're not done. That's the important thing about polynomial equations. Factoring is not just a one-step process. You still have another rule embedded in here. This is a difference of perfect squares. So this will break down into two more parentheses. What times itself is x squared? x. What times itself is 16? 4. I want a negative 16, so one's a plus, one's a minus. Do not forget the GCF. Again, if you look, 
you have an x squared here, an x here, and an x here. So you're not writing one equation, you're not writing two equations. Again, you're writing three equations. So you're going to take 3x squared equal it to 0. You're going to take x plus 4 equal it to 0. You're going to take x minus 4 equal to 0. Now what I want you to notice is not all those equations are linear. Remember, what does linear mean? To the first power. This equation is to the first power. It's linear, so to solve it, we just move over the 4. So our first solution is x is 4. This equation is x to the first power, so it's linear. So how do we solve it? We subtract 4, and we get x equals negative 4. So there's our second solution. But if you look closely, this is not 3x. This is 3x squared. So this is not a linear equation. This one is a quadratic. And now you have the decision to make. In module 4, we learned there's four ways to solve a quadratic. You could set it equal to 0 and factor it. You could square root it. You could do complete the square. And last resort is the quadratic formula. I will tell you right now in college algebra, most of your quadratics are either going to be solved by factoring or square rooting. All, that's the basic way we do them. Only very rarely do we have to resort to complete the square or the quadratic formula. Well, sweeties, this is a monomial, one term. You can't factor one term, so we can't use factoring. So we're obviously going to use here the square root method. But here's where the problem comes in. To do the square root method, the equation doesn't get set equal to zero. The steps were totally different. So let's recall, how do you solve a quadratic doing the square root method? Well, step one was to isolate the exponent. Get the square by itself. So if you remember your basic skills of algebra, when we write 3x squared, this square only belongs to the x. It doesn't belong to the 3, so the 3 has got to move. The way we move the 3 is the opposite of multiplying, we divide. So that's going to cancel, leave us with x squared. 0 divided among 3 people is 0. Now that your variable is isolated, your square is isolated, now you do the opposite of squaring, which is square root. Squares and square roots are opposite operations, or inverses, so they cancel. That leaves you x. Remember, every time you square root, you have to have two answers, so you put a plus or minus. And now let's talk about this. Do you leave a square root of 0? No, you do not. 0 is a perfect square in the sense what times itself is 0 is 0. So the square root of 0 is 0. I want everybody to look closely. What degree was this equation? It was degree 4. How many solutions could you have up to? You should have 4. Technically, you do. You have a positive 4, a negative 4. You have a positive 0 and a negative 0. That's 4 solutions. But now, guys, you've got to use your common sense. Does 0 ever get a sign in front of it? No, it doesn't. So when you go to write your final answers, you would write x is 4, x is negative 4, and then just x is 0. You do not put a sign in front of 0. So you're going to say, well, there's only three answers here. Yes, you're writing three answers. Technically, there were four. But 0 is not positive, 0 is not negative. OK, I believe we have one more example to try. So let's erase this. All right. And if you look closely, let's look at our last example. Let me get my notes here. All right. So our last equation on the notes is this polynomial. x to the fourth minus 4x squared plus 3 equals 0. All right. So again. We know it's not linear, it's not degree 1. We know it's not quadratic because it's not just degree 2. It's degree 4, which makes it polynomial. This is telling you, hey, I'm going to have how many solutions? That's right, we're going to have 4. So now we're going to work it. To solve a polynomial equation, you want to factor it so it has to be set equal to, very good, 0. Well, it's already done. It's set equal to 0, so now we're going to factor. So we're going to go through our rules. Is it GCF? No. You can't divide all these terms by the same thing. Is it the difference of perfect squares? No. Because it doesn't have two terms, it has three. So this is the trinomial rule. And trinomials always factor into two sets of parentheses. 
And tr when you do trinomial rule of factoring, you always think about FOIL. F-O-I-L. So you start with the first term. What can multiply to give us x to the fourth? Well, that's easy. That's x squared times x squared. Then you go to the last term. What can multiply to 3? That would be 3 times 1. But remember, to see if that's right, you've got to check the outers and the inners. If you look, your outers are 1x squared, your inners are 3x squared, and will that add to a 4x squared? Sure it will. 1 and 3 add to 4. Now, if you want to add to a negative 4, what do you know about your signs? Well, adding means the signs have to be the same. To add to a negative, they're both going to be negative. So far, so good? Now, guys, here we go again. Are you done factoring? I'm looking closely. I see another rule embedded. It's not GCF. There are two terms here, and they're connected with subtraction. Oh, it must be difference of perfect squares. But here's the catch. Are both of these difference of perfect squares? Well, x squared is a perfect square. It's x times x. Is 3 a perfect square? No. So that binomial cannot factor anymore. We leave it. So we go over here. Is x squared minus 1 a difference of perfect squares? Sure it is. x squared is a perfect square, and 1 is a perfect square. So we talked about knowing the list of perfect squares. That's why you got to know it. You've got to be able to rattle up 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100. You've got to know the numbers that are perfect squares so you can factor quickly. This is x times x. 1 is 1 times 1. You want to make a subtraction so you always get different signs. And it equals 0. So that's as far as you can go with factoring. So now if you look, you have an x here, an x here, an x here. So you're writing me again three equations. So there's the first one. There's the second one, and there's the third one. Are any of them linear? What does linear mean? To the power of 1. Sure, these are both linear. So let's solve these first. This is easy. We'll add 1. So our first solution is positive 1. This is a linear equation. We're going to subtract 1. Our second solution is negative 1. This is not linear because it's x squared. So what kind of equation is it? Very good. It's quadratic. So again, you have to make a decision now. We have two basic ways we're always going to work a quadratic. We're going to see if we can factor it, and if that fails, we'll do the square root method. Only if we can't do those do we resort to complete the square or the formula. Well, we already decided this doesn't factor. There's nothing in common, no GCF. It's not a difference of perfect squares because 3 is not a perfect square, and it's not a trinomial. So if it doesn't factor, we're going to do the square root method. Remember, when you do the square root method, you have to move everything over that's not part of the exponent. So we're going to move the 3 over. So we're going to get x squared equals 3. And the opposite of squaring is square rooting. Squares and square roots are inverses. Opposite operations, they cancel. When you square root, you always put a plus or minus. And now you have a square root of 3. And we discussed this. Can you break that down? No. The reason why 3 doesn't break down is it's not a perfect square number, nor is there a perfect square number that divides into it. So if you look, what degree was this polynomial? Oh, very good. It was degree 4. How many solutions do we have? You're right. We have 4. We have a positive square root of 3, a negative square root of 3, a negative 1, and a positive 1. Now, you got to be very careful when you're doing your assignments on the computer. Some computer assignments want you to write each solution out separately. Separate it with a comma. Some ca computer assignments will let you be fancy and use the plus or minus. So another way to write these solutions is plus or minus 3 and plus or minus 1. And that's it for solving polynomial equations. Okay, the next module we learn another new equation. See you later.